हस्तकी धरावा अवघा हल्ला कल्ला करावा मुलुख बढ़वावा अथवा बुड़वावा धर्म संस्था बने साथे इसका मतलब यह है कि भगवान को हम हमारे मस्तक के ऊपर ले ले और तूफान खड़ा कीजिए जो जिस तरह से जिस जगह से उसके मस्तिष्क में जो कल्पना है उससे जो तूफान खड़ा कर सकता है करना चाहता है वो उसे करना चाहिए और इस तरीके से जब सब लोग साथ में काम करेंगे तब धर्म की संस्था बना होगी और इसका एक बहुत बड़ा उदाहरण स्वयं छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज ने उस सत्रहवीं सदी में हम सबको दिखाया कि जैसा अभी परम पूजनीय स्वामी जी ने कहा कि आदि शंकराचार्य जी की वजह से आज हम हिंदू बचे हैं ऑन द सेम लाइन बिकॉज ऑफ छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज हम आज हिंदू ऐसे बचे हैं तो मुझे ऐसे लगता है कि एक इस प्रकार का जो एक समय था हमारे यहाँ इतनी जैसे इस किताब की जब मैंने स्क्रिप्ट पहले पढ़ी तो मुझे एक प्रकार की मेरी मुझसे घृणा हो गई कि मेरी सब आई एम फिफ्टी टू ईयर ओल्ड मुझे लगता है कि मेरी सब जिंदगी मेरी सब जवानी खत्म हो गई एक पुरुषार्थ खोए हुए इंसान के कारण क्योंकि मुझे मेरी पहचान ही नहीं हुई थी हमारे एक आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री थे जो वो कहते थे कि कितनी गलत बात हो गई मैं मेरा जन्म हिंदू धर्म में हो गया मुझे शर्म आती है उससे लेके हम आ गए कि गर्व से को हम हिंदू हैं लेकिन आज का यह समय है कि हमें आक्रमक हिंदुत्व का जय जय कर, करना चाहिए और उस आक्रमक हिंदुत्व के लिए अगर सबसे बड़ी सहायता किससे मिलेगी तो यह असत्य में हो जाते बुक जैसे किताबों से मिलेगी जैसे अभिजीत जो उसी काम कर रहे हैं वैसे बहुत सारे ऑथर हमारे सामने आज बैठे हैं आदरणीय मीनाक्षी जैन जी है शेफाली वैद्य जी है आनंद रंगनाथन जी है शशांक बहुत सारे लोग इसमें काम कर रहे तो मुझे लगता है कि ईश्वरी कार्य है दिस इज अल्लकल्लो टाइम तो आज हमें आक्रमक हिंदू बनना है लेकिन वो आक्रमण रहेगा ज्ञान का आक्रमण हमारे वेदवीर आर्य जी यहां पे बैठे हैं कि जो कहते हैं तेरह सौ साल का जो क्रोनिकल जो क्रोनोलॉजी का सब बखेड़ा खड़ा कर दिया है वही एक जड़ है तो ऐसे बहुत सारे तो ये एक युद्ध का समय है मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये युद्ध के समय में इस प्रकार के कार्य की बहुत बड़ी जरूरत है परम पूजने स्वामी जी ने और एक कहा आज वो मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा कि इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ हैविंग कोई थीम पार्क वगैरह वो तो होने ही चाहिए जैसे हम आलंदी में संत ज्ञानेश्वर की यहाँ जी भी बोलते कि वहां पे जो प्रदर्शनी है वो तीन करोड़ या छह करोड़ करके प्रदर्शनी बनाने से हमें अच्छा है कि उसको कैसे ऑनलाइन करें कैसे वो मिशन में बदल जाए कैसे वो मूवमेंट में बदल जाए इस तरीके की कोशिशें करने ये आज की मुझे लगता है बहुत बड़ी जरूरत है मैं हमेशा ये कहता हूँ कि जैसा ये इंटरनेट टेक्नोलॉजी है ये मोबाइल टेक्नोलॉजी है इसका जो जन्म हुआ है इसका जो संशोधन संशोधन हुआ है इसका एक ही कारण है कि हिंदू धर्म का पुनरुत्थान हो बिल गेट और नारायण मूर्ति ये इसके बाय प्रोडक्ट है हर हिंदू को यह समझना चाहिए ये कि टेक्नोलॉजी हमारे लिए एक शस्त्र के रूप में हमें उपलब्ध हुई है तो किस तरह से इसी मराठी में कहते हैं कि काटा ने काटा काढ़ा तो शस्त्र इसी शस्त्र का उपयोग करके किस तरह से हम लोग हमारे हिंदू धर्म को और विशेषतः युवाओं को आज टुडे वी फाइंड दैट मोर देन 65 फाइव परसेंट सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन इज बिलो 40 सो 90 करोड़ पीपल जो यंग है द यंगेस्ट ऑन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड यंगेस्ट कंट्री ऑफ द वर्ल्ड डज नॉट नो एनीथिंग अबाउट द हिस्ट्री डज नॉट नो एनीथिंग अबाउट द कल्चर और हम लोग ऐसे छाती पीट रहे हैं जैसे सर बोल रहे तो छाती पीट के कुछ नहीं होगा मुझे उनको बताना पड़ेगा कि अरे भैया सुन लो हम कौन है और हमको क्या करना चाहिए तो मुझे लगता है असत्य में हो जाते का ये तो पहला खंड निकाला है ऐसे 10 20 पचास खंड और सिर्फ अभिजीत जोग नहीं बहुत सारे स्कॉलर को इस तरह से लिखना चाहिए और इस प्रकार से हमें एक आक्रमक रूपती से अटैक इज द बेस्ट डिफेंस इस स्टाइल से हमको हमारी जो न्यूनता है हमारा न्यूनगंट है उससे आगे जाके जो स्वयं है वो मृगेंद्रता हमारे में बसी है तो उस पर हम सब जैसा कहें कि हम पाप कर ही नहीं सकते स्वामी विवेकानंद जी ने कहा था कि मुझे सिर्फ वो सौ लोग चाहिए तो मुझे लगता है हम हम हु इज हैविंग द नर ऑफ स्टील एंड बॉडी ऑफ आयन तो मुझे लगता है कि ये ये हम क्यों नहीं बन पाए क्योंकि हमें पता ही नहीं था 
हमको हमेशा ये बताया कि भारतीय है ना वो तो साले हारने वाली औलाद है वो कभी जीत ही नहीं सकते उनको क्या अकल ही नहीं है और आज पूरे विश्व पे जो राज कर रहे हैं वो गूगल हो माइक्रोसॉफ्ट हो सबके जो जो प्रमुख है वो सब भारतीय है तो मुझे लगता है कि ये ये इस प्रकार की किताबें और फिर विथ यूज ऑफ दिस टेक्नोलॉजी सोशल मीडिया वॉट जब हम हमारे बच्चों को ये जो नाइनटी करोड़ मीन्स टोटल विश्व का पॉपुलेशन आज आठ बिलियन है उसमें वन बिलियन ऑलमोस्ट वन बिलियन इज हिंदू यूथ तो इसको हम एजुकेट करें उनको हम वॉरियर बनाए और इस तरह का मुझे लगता है कि अगर हम साथ में काम और मुझे ये भी और जरूर कहना मैं चाहूंगा अभी हमारा समय है अभी ईश्वर का समय है ये ईश्वरी कार्य का समय है कई बार हमको लोग मिलते हैं वो मराठी में बोलते हैं वो खारिज सा वाटा हो चला तो हम लोग हमारा छोटा सा स्मॉल पार्ट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट मैं तो बोलता हूँ कि आप तो उस हाथी का पार्ट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट कर सकते हो आप चिटी का क्यों करना चाहते हो कम हेड न्योछा वर्क करो अपने इस तरीके का काम करने के लिए मुझे लगता है इस तरह का किताब बहुत उपयुक्त रहेगा और हम सब लोग हमारे यूथ को किस तरह से इसमें एजुकेट करें इसका हम प्रयास करें और मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि इसी के साथ में हमको आगे चल के ये भी कहना चाहिए कि सिर्फ भारत माता की जय ऐसा करके नहीं समाप्त होना चाहिए तो विश्व गुरु भारत माता की जय ऐसा कह के हमें हमारी बात समाप्त करनी चाहिए विश्व गुरु भारत माता की जय I heard Swami Ji's talk, which was straight from the heart, and it. Uh, I had uh, things prepared. I always come prepared, but today is not a debate. But in any way, I I want to junk what I had prepared because uh, his words have really uh, stirred something in me. And the first question that it has stirred in me is, is what all of us should ask, which is, what is your weapon? What is my weapon? Ask ourselves that. and i have realized listening to swami ji that sabse bada shastra shastra hai his weapon is not money his weapon is not power his weapon is not recognition or applause or people fawning at his feet and yet the most powerful man in this country falls at his feet because his weapon is wisdom his weapon is knowledge and that is what our culture has bestowed on us we should never forget that that is the greatest weapon and swami ji talked about consumerism very rightly talked about today people are talking of economics the talk of uh, power in terms of economics nations are economic powers and this consumerism and it's so true and he said that we've detached ourselves from the rest of the animal kingdom humans <coughs> see themselves and it's so true and it's so tragic because as a scientist if you were to look at barely 120 years ago when biologists and biology was a nascent field then they were drawing what biologists now call as the tree of life that is the fill up all organisms on one page to signify their genesis and if you were to look at 1880s how the tree of life was it was a huge tree with various protruding branches and there were various organisms placed at the end of those branches but on the top of the tree sat man not just not just woman man if you were to look at the modern tree of life and you can google it and you will see that tree is not just a tree it has about 6000 old branches with all different organisms amoeba and you uh, bacteria and fungi and viruses belonging to each branch and you see humans they're barely hanging on to one branch that is what the reality is and the tragedy is that we've gained so much knowledge scientific knowledge in the last 140 odd years especially in the last 100 years tremendous amount of knowledge so much knowledge that we've reached a position where we've actually found out the true tree of life and yet as swami ji says we are harking back to the old tree of life which is the wrong tree of life is this the point of knowledge is this our weapon so that that has really stirred in me and uh, the other swami ji i mean this is a real treat if you know listening to one swami is a treat imagine listening to two swami ji's uh, the other swami ji says that nowadays if scientists have started to
talk, then saints have started to talk as well, and I think that's great. But um, more than, uh, I think the, the true nature of this whole interaction is that I think you see a lot of, at least I'm talking of Hinduism, of what little I know, that there is a lot of scientists in a saint. There might not be a lot of saint in a scientist. But if you look at the Hindu philosophy, if you look at what Swamiji has said, if you look at the, if you, a man in a hurry, look at catchphrases that Hinduism gives you, Vasudeva Kutumbaka, you analyze it, you find out how incredibly true it is to the bedrock of what science is, genetic diversity, the world is a family, thinking, that thinking, that philosophy. So saints like Swamiji are actually scientists. We don't even realize it. I, I don't, I dare say, I don't know whether he realizes it, but he is as much a scientist as other scientists are. And that is what this culture has given us. And if I may come very briefly, uh, uh, Shif Ali, to the question that you've asked, and also if I have a couple of minutes, including the extra 30 seconds that if I may request. <laughs> it is that I call myself as a Darwinian atheist, and I'm proud that culturally being a Hindu, uh, what glorious way of life, view of life, as Swamiji has said, vision of truth, endows on this that you can be an atheist within the fold of a so-called religion, you know. <laughs> I think it's gloriously ironical, it's beautiful. And because I am what I think I am, it gives me, a, I, I don't know, a liberty, self-confessed liberty to detach myself, to see how proceedings are going. And, uh, and I'll be very honest, Swamiji, people call me once and very rarely do they call me again because I'm just too blunt and too honest. <laughs> I was called to um, a symposium to talk on dynasty. Uh, by BJP functionaries and I listed 94 BJP netas who are dynast and I don't think I'll be called again but the, the point of the matter is that when we are talking of this renaissance that has been brought about and a lot of people due respect they certainly feel so the esteemed uh, uh, you know XIS officer chief secretary really feels so that Mr. Modi has brought about this renaissance many people feel so I think even Swamiji said in passing, a lot of other people have said this. Um, and that Hindus must do their job now. Now it's up to the Hindus to do it. I am sorry, I disagree. I think the Hindus did their job, which was to elect Modi. Modi is not doing his job. Whatever renaissance we are seeing now is despite, it is in spite of what Modi is doing. You elected someone, it is not your job. You, your jobs are hundred other jobs. It is like Supreme Court saying, well, there was no support for farm bills. Farmers didn't come to support. Well, farmers are farming. They are in Telangana, they are in Kerala, they are growing crops, they are making us, they are feeding us. It is not their job to come to the Supreme Court to say that we support these farm laws. And ultimately what happened was that we were held ransom to three million odd Arhatiyas middlemen. And the real 82% of Indian farmers who wanted those farm bills did not get the farm bills. Who lost? The farmers lost. So it is not your job to see renaissance. Your job was to elect someone who promised this renaissance. And it is not for nothing that I say that Hindus are 8th class citizens. And I'll, I don't have to give the 8 reasons that I give. But just 2 would suffice. And the biggest one of that is, in fact, when Swamiji talked about Hindu temples, their revenue, their land, the rent that they get from land belongs to Hindus. It should go back to Hindus. So we asked this, why is it that under this government, there are more Hindu temples now under the control of the government than there were under the Congress? How is this a renaissance? When the Hindus feel so happy, that a Kashi corridor has been built by Modi government for 350 crores. Do they realize that 350 crores is a monthly hundi revenue of one Hindu temple? If you allow that revenue to belong to that temple, Hindu temples would make 20 such corridors. But no, we are happy that one corridor has been built. Do you realize that 
Tirupati revenue, the land, is worth 75,000 crore rupees. All that money is being usurped by the central government. How is this renaissance? How is this renaissance when lakhs of crores of Hindu money that could be used for making hundreds of thousands of Hindu institutions and temples and as Swamiji said, and he is quoting facts, let me add to that. He talked about the figure of 2 lakh crore, let me add to that. I have to give you 30 seconds. Oh, okay, so. okay, yes. But the fact of the matter is, we talked of Hindu temples and I ask, Nations weaken not because of their past, but by how they are taught it. And we've been taught that this renaissance is coming, but how much time do we need? Isn't eight years enough? Do you know that this government is continuing with the right to education because of which more than 100,000 Hindu run schools have been closed in the last eight years? How is this renaissance? When you want Hindu run temples, when you want Hindu run schools, and those very things are being closed in Madras High Court, the Tamil Nadu government has stated in the last two years, 11,999 Hindu temples cannot conduct a single puja. Is this Hindu renaissance? I have exhausted my seconds, but I thought I would give you not, not just a devil's advocate, because that is not the real point. I am at the feet of Swamiji. But this is what I feel, that every Hindu should, yes, take pride on what is happening. But let us not move away from the reality, which is we are far, far away from the renaissance. Thank you so much.